let's do something um, called composite functions. So what is this? It's like a function within a function here. Let me show you a quick example. We're doing Soka Toa stuff. I think you should be okay for that. Um, let's say you have y is equals to the square root of x, okay? You can even say this is y1, and then let's say y2 is equals to x plus 1. What I can do is I can throw this into this. What is that going to look like? So you just replace, basically you're replacing wherever you see an x, you're going to replace it with a new function. So you get x plus 1, like that. Um, another example would be like something like this. Let's say f of x is 3x squared plus 2x, okay? What's f of 1? See x? You replace it with 1. Yeah, you'll replace it with 1. So it's going to look like this. What's f of a? Well, you're going to replace the x with an a. So it's going to look like 3a squared plus 2a. But now, what about f of x plus 1? What would that be? You just replace x with x plus 1. Yeah, exactly. So 3x plus 1 squared plus 2 times x plus 1. So this thing right here, this is a composite function. You had the original function, this guy, and then we replace this with um, x plus 1 to get this, OK? And let's do some examples that they want us to do. And it's not terribly difficult, but um, all right. I can do the first one, A. It says f of g of 4. So what this means is first, you're going to find what g of 4 is, OK? And then you're going to plug that value into f. So g of x is x plus 5. So g of 4 would simply be 4 plus 5. That's a 9, right? And then mm -hmm. f of g of 4. Well, this bit here is a 9, so we're just finding f of 9. So that's going to be f of x is root x. So f of 9 would be square root of 9. And that'll be three, and you're done. Cool? Uh -huh. You want to try B? What's F of four? First, do this bit F of four. They've given you a function F of x, right? What would F of four be if F of x is root x? You're just going to replace, um, see, f of x is root x. f of 4, you simply replace that x with a 4. So it'll be root 4, right, which is a mm -hmm. 2. Now we're trying to find g of f of 4. We know f of 4 is a 2. So we're just trying to find g of 2. What would that be? See, g of x is x plus 5. What is g of 2? 2 plus 5. Yeah, plus exactly. Seven. 7, and you're done. Right? It's not too bad. C and D, there's no numbers, though. So here, let's try doing C. C wants f of g of x, right? So what's g of x? g of x is just x plus 5. See, like that? If f of x is square root of x, what's f of x plus 5? You're simply going to replace this x with whatever's in this bracket. So you're going to get a root of x plus 5, like that. OK? Mm -hmm. Replace the thing in the main function with what you have in the bracket. Same idea for d as well. So they want us to find g of f of x. We know f of x by itself is root x, so replace f of x with root x. If g of x is x plus 5, what's g of root x? You just replace it with x plus 5. Yeah, replace the x with what we have in the bracket. Right now we have root x, so it's going to become root x plus 5. And there you go. You're done. Cool? Mm -hmm. This is difficult? No. Or let me give you a very difficult example, just to just to horn this thing in. Let's say f of x is sine x squared plus 5. Let's say g of x is um, 
2 to the power of, I don't know, like log x or something, something weird, okay? Looks kind of difficult functions, but it's not that bad. So if you want to do f of g of x, okay, we know g of x is 2 to the log x, right? Like that? And we want to find f of 2 to the log x. So what you do is you're going to replace, if you look at what f of x is, there's only one x. You're going to replace that x with what we have in the bracket. So it's going to become sine of 2 to the log x, this entire term squared, because x is being squared, plus 5, like that. What about the other way around? g of f of x. So we're just trying to find g. What's f of x? f of x is... This guy here, sine x squared plus 5. Now we know this is g of x, so we're going to replace this x with what we have in the bracket. So the final answer is going to be 2 to the power of log sine x squared plus 5, and you're done. Okay? That's how mm -hmm. you do composite functions. So it's like a function within a function. And the, you can, this is like a Russian doll, actually. You can do this. You can have like three layers. Right now we only have two layers, but you can have three, four, five, six. So what's the idea behind this? Well, this basically tells you the chain rule. So we're doing derivatives. This falls under derivatives. Um, so what's the chain rule? So imagine something like this, 3x plus 4 squared, right? Let's say this is y. y prime, to find y prime, you're going to use the power rule, if you remember. You're going to bring the exponent down and take 1 away from it. So if you use the power rule here, you're going to get 2 times 3x plus 4, like this, yeah? Because mm -hmm. 2 minus 1 is a 1. But now, because this is a function within a function, because we have 3x plus 4 on the inside, on the outside we have a quadratic, we have a squared thing, you need to use a chain rule. And that says you have to multiply this by the derivative of the bracket, which would be a 3, right? The derivative of 3x, anything x, you just drop the letter. Like 3b, which just drop the letter, it'll be 3. And that's it. So this gives you 6 times 3x plus 4, and you're done. So this is the chain rule applies to composite functions when you have one thing inside of another. Here, let's try doing this. Okay, what's going to be the derivative of this? First, use the power rule, yeah? You see power? What's the power? 3 over 2. Bring that here. So you get 3 over 2, x squared plus x. And then take 1 away from um, 3 over 2. What's 3 over 2 minus 1? One over two? Yeah, one over two. But then you're not done yet. You need to multiply this with the derivative of the bracket. What's the derivative of the bracket? Just the inside bit. The derivative of x squared is uh, 2x, right? Bring the two in the front, take one away. So that's going to be 2x. So what's the derivative of x? Um, x is like 1x, right? It's the same thing as mm -hmm. 1x. You drop the letter. If there's only one power, like x to the power of 1, you simply drop the letter. It's going to be 2x plus 1, like that, and you're done. Cool? Mm -hmm. Here, look at this. x cubed plus 3x squared plus 5x plus 6. The derivative of a number is a 0, so this one goes away. The derivative of 5x, drop the letter. It's going to be a 5. The derivative of 3x squared, bring the 2 in the front. So you get 2 times 3 times x to the power of 1. What's the derivative of x cubed? It's 2x squared. It's 3x squared, because you want to bring the number first and then take 1 away from it. Okay. Oh, OK. 3x squared for that one.
it says find dy over dx. That just means find um, y prime. This means the same thing. It's the derivative interchangeable. Well, I'll be y prime here. And remember to use a chain rule as well. First, use the power rule on the big guy on the outside. You bring the seven in the front? Yeah, seven in front. Everything inside is going to stay as it is. What's going to be the new power? To the power of six. Yeah, and then what do we multiply this by? The derivative of the bracket. What's the derivative of this guy? 2x minus 5. Uh, just 2x. The derivative of 5 is 0. Right? OK. 5x would be 5. But just the number 5, it's a 0. And that's it. That's all you have to do. I guess you could multiply the 7 and the 2x to get a 14x. OK, this one. Going to have to use a bunch of ideas. Um, so if you remember, there was something called a product rule, which was uh, if you have f times g, this becomes f prime g plus f g prime. Means the derivative of the first one times the second one as it is, plus the first one as it is times the derivative of the second one. Let's use this rule. What's f prime? If this is f, okay, just this first bracket is f, second bracket is g. What's the derivative of the first bracket? This entire thing. Use the power rule to bring the 4 down, yeah? Mm -hmm. Everything on the inside stays as it is. What's going to be the new power? 3. 3. What do we multiply this by? 2x. Yes. So that's just f prime. Okay. And then you multiply this mm -hmm. by g as it is. So don't even, yeah, you don't need to do anything. Plus f as it is, the first guy as it is, times g prime. What's g prime? If this entire thing is g, what's g prime? You bring the 3 to the front. Yeah. And? What's the new power? Squared. Yep. What do you multiply this by? Just look for the derivative of the inside bit. What's the derivative of 4x minus 5? 1. Uh, no. 4x would be 4. 5 would be 0. OK? 1x is 1. 4x, just drop the letter 4. 5 is a 0. Oh, so you, OK. Okay, and that's it. I guess you could collect like terms, I guess. Uh, 4 times 2x is 8x. And then we have this guy and the other guy. And on the other thing, we have 3 times 4 is a 12. And then, yeah, but I don't know if this step is really necessary, but it looks better like that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Was this difficult? No. So basically, you have to use the product rule as well as um, they open the brackets, but I wouldn't recommend that, as well as the other thing. Um, same idea here. But this one, you have to use something called the quotient rule, because now instead of dividing two different things, you are um, yeah, instead of multiplying, you're dividing. So what does the quotient rule say? It says this. If you have f over g, it's going to be f very similar to the last one except there's a minus here. And, and you got to divide everything by g, the original g squared. So let's look at this. Again, first thing, use the power rule, right? Look at the bigger picture. 10, bring that down. Everything on the inside stays as it is. What's going to be the new power? 9. 9, right? Now what do we multiply this by? You got to use the yeah. quotient rule because inside the bracket, we have two different things being divided. So the guy on the top is f, the guy on the bottom is g. Look at the formula, it's f prime g. What's f prime if f is 1 plus x squared? It's 1. No, it's not 1. 
So we're trying to find the derivative of 1 plus x squared. The derivative of 1 is a 0. What's the derivative of x squared? It's 2x. Yeah, it's 2x. So that's f prime, 2x. You multiply g as it is. So g is the guy on the bottom. So 1 minus x squared. Yeah. So this was mm -hmm. f prime. This is g minus f as it is. So your first guy, the numerator as it is, times g prime. What's g prime if g is 1 minus x squared? It's also 2x. Uh, yeah, it's negative 2x, though, because you have minus x squared. Okay. And then all over g squared. So g is 1 minus x squared. So 1 minus x squared, you're going to square the whole thing like that, and you're done. Okay, so we used um, the chain rule as well as the quotient rule. This is how it is going to be, right? We're going to learn one thing at a time, but the goal is eventually um, to combine them. Do you understand this? Mm -hmm. um, all right, let's try doing these two, I guess. If there's a square root, what's the power? What's the exponent? Because you have to rewrite this in exponential form or an exponent form. It's 1 over 2. Yeah, so the square root of that entire thing, it's going to be this everything to the power of 1 over 2. This is still y. What's y prime? You bring the 1 over 2 in the front? Yeah. Everything in, inside stays as it is. What's going to be the new power? Is it negative one over two? Yeah, it is negative one over 10. Now what do we multiply this by? Two X. Yeah, that's it. Okay, and you're done. If you wanna clean this up, two and two cancels out. You have an X, you have a negative exponent, toss that in the denominator to make it positive. So you have positive one over two, it just means square root and you're done. Like that, okay? Okay. Okay, what about f? How should we approach this one? What's the strategy? Any ideas? Like what? which form does it look like it is in? Hmm. What if we bring the x squared guy upstairs like this? What's going to be the power? Negative 1. Oh, not negative 1, negative 5, because there's a 5 there. Yeah, if there was no 5, it would be negative 1, right? Oh, OK. Now, this is much easier to work with. Now, just use, let's just use the power rule on this. You bring the negative 5 down? Yeah. What's going to be the new power? Negative 6. Yes. What do we multiply this by? 2x. Yeah. And you're done. Cool? Mm -hmm. You can clean this up a little bit. Uh, negative 5 times 2x is what? What's negative 5 times 2x? Negative 10x. Yeah, negative 10x. And you see this uh, negative 6 guy, this this entire thing? You can toss it in the denominator to make it positive. And there you go. That's going to be the final answer. OK. Here's a composite function. So they've given us f of x and g of x, and they want us to find h of x. So h of x is f of g of x, yeah? And g of x, it's given, it's going to be 1 over x. 
So if f of x is x minus 3 squared, what's f of 1 over x? See, this is f of x. We're trying to find f of 1 over x. Just replace the x with 1 over x. What do you get? No? You see this x? We're just going to replace that with what's in the bracket. So it's going to be 1 over x, because there's only one x, like this. Okay? Okay. So that, that thing that we have right now is h of x. Now the question's asking us to find the derivative of this. Let's use the power rule. Bring the 2 down, right? Mm -hmm. 1 over 3 minus this, and the power is going to be 1. All right, this bit is tricky. What's the derivative of the bracket? The derivative of 3 or minus 3 is a 0, so we can ignore that bit. How do we go about finding the derivative of 1 over x? Any ideas? We've got to use the, uh, the trick that we used in the previous question. Bring it up. Bring it in the numerator. So you... So it's negative one? Yeah, it's gonna be x to the negative one, okay? This is still y actually, this is not y prime, but now we can find y prime. Bring the negative one here. x, what's gonna be the new power? Negative two. Negative two, and you can clean this up by writing one over x squared. There you go, that's the derivative of the bracket. The derivative of minus three is zero, so that's gone. The derivative of one over x we found here. It's going to be negative 1 over x squared. So you multiply that by negative 1 over x squared. And you're done. OK? OK. Let's try doing um, this one. Product rule or quotient rule? Product? Yeah, so this first bracket is f, second bracket is g. It says it's f prime g plus f g prime. What's the derivative of the first bracket? Because that's going to be f prime. It's 2x. Uh, I don't know. You're oh, looking wait, at no. the bigger picture, yeah. yeah. It's going to be 3 first, right? Like this? What's well, going to be the new power? Squared. Squared, and then you multiply this by what? 2x. 2x, there we go. So that's just f prime so far. And then it says f prime times g, so it's going to be times g like this. That's f prime g plus f as it is, the first guy as it is, times g prime, right? What's the what's g prime? Again, the entire um, thing is... The two to the front. Yeah. What do you multiply it by? 3x to the power of 2. Yeah, there we go. And that's going to be it. That is it. This one says, for what values of x do these two curves have the same slope? Now remember, slope is just a derivative. OK, let's just start up by finding the derivative. What's y prime? If y is this, what's y prime? You bring the 2 in the front? Yeah. So it's going to be 1 plus x cubed. What do you multiply this by? 3x squared. Yes. With well, this one, you can actually open the brackets, uh, and you would need to. Uh, let's foil these two. Throw the 2 in there. What do you get? Two plus two x cubed. Yeah, two plus two x cubed. And then we're going to multiply this by three x squared. Two times three x squared is six x squared. What's two x cubed times three x squared? Six x to the power of five. Yeah plus 6x to the power of 5. So that's the first guy. What about y prime for the second one, 2x cubed? Uh, 
Um, 12x to the power of 5. Yeah, 12x to the power of 5. So it says the same slope. That means we're trying to find the point of intersection. So basically set this, the slope of the first, equals to this. So you get 6x squared plus 6x5 is equals to 12x5, OK? Mm -hmm. And now how do we solve this for x? That's a little bit more difficult. Usually, um, whenever you're solving like a polynomial, you want to move everything to the same side. So I'm going to move 12x5 to the other side, OK? What do I get? How many x5s on the left? There's six right now, but we're going to move the 12. I mean, to move that, we are subtracting 12x5 from both sides, right? Like this, you get a zero on the right. And 6x5 minus 12x5 is minus 6x5. OK? Mm -hmm. Like this. Now, what's, what's the GCF? We can pull something out from both of them. What, what can we pull out? Six x squared. Yeah. What are we left with? Um, x cubed. Um, you're going to be left with something here as well. One. Because you're pulling 6x squared out of 6x squared, you're left with a 1, okay? Um, okay? The number of terms is going to stay the same. Whenever you're doing this GCF things, if you started off with 2, there should be 2 terms in the bracket. And now what you do is, you see on the right side, you have a 0. Whenever mm -hmm. you get a 0 on one side of an equation, uh, when you have multiple things on the left, either this is 0, so either 6x squared is 0, or 1 minus x cubed is 0, like that. If 6x squared is 0, how do we solve this for x? You divide by 6. Yeah. So what do you get on the other side? What's 0 over 6? It's just 0. Yeah. And then you squared both sides. What's the square root of 0? Square root of zero is zero. Okay. Mm -hmm. Square root of zero is a zero. What about on the other side? How do we solve this guy? What you can do is you can add x cubed on both sides to get rid of it on the other. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. If x cubed is one, what's x? You want to cube root both sides. Last time in the other one, we squared root it. Now you cube root. What's the cube root of 1? It's a 1 as well, OK? Mm -hmm. 1 to the power of anything is a 1. Like a 1 to the power of minus 5 is a 1. 1 to the power of 0 is a 1. The only thing that we don't know is what's 1 to the power of infinity. What's 1 to the power of infinity? It's, it's, that's a tricky question. The thing is, we don't know this one. Logic says it should be one, but the um, technical answer is that we don't know. Similarly, zero over anything, any number that's not a zero is a zero. And zero to the power of anything is also a zero, except zero to the power of zero and zero to the power of infinity. These things you won't see for a while. These are pretty abstract. That's the only thing we don't know. Everything else we do know, OK? OK. What's 0 over 0? We don't know. You can't do that. No, you can't. What's 1 over 0? You also can't do that? No, you can't. 
but this one we know the limit is infinity okay mm -hmm. what that means is if you divide one by a very very small number you get a very very large number so it's it's headed towards infinity but we can't do that we don't know what it is so you can say it's infinity when it's asking you for the limits What else is looking dicey here? They're all pretty similar. Okay, so we did this thing before. The first thing that we did, very annoying. And then after this, we found the shortcut method, which is like these guys. Um, we haven't really used these notations, but you don't have to. You can just use um, whichever one you think you're more comfortable with. This one's a little bit abstract, which is why we haven't really used this. This one's um, a little bit easier to follow. Let's try doing some very, very quick ones. Um, yeah, this one, I don't, I don't wanna do this, but we have to. It says, if it didn't say this, if it didn't say the definition, you could have just said the first one is four X minus five. But the fact that it does say that means you're gonna to have to use the formula. Which one of these would be the most difficult, do you think? To find the derivative, which one would you not wanna do? This one's pretty easy. This one, you're gonna to have to rationalize the um, numerator. This one, I think, is going to be the trickiest one. So let's do that, OK? Bear with me. This one's going to be uh, pretty interesting. So let's say f of x is x over 4 minus x. What is f of x plus h? All you have to do is replace the x's with what you have in the bracket. So x plus h over 4 minus x plus h. Yeah. And it's 4 minus x plus h, like in a bracket like this. So it's going to become 4 minus x minus h, OK? OK. And the formula says this limit, y prime, return to find y prime is limit as h approaches 0 of um, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So f of x plus h, we just found it up there. It's this guy minus x minus f of x. That's just the original guy like this and all over h. Cool? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think the next step is? The goal is to cancel out this h with one of the h's from the top. But right now, we can't do that. Mm -hmm. There's only one thing you can do, actually. You, the only thing you can do is uh, take the LCD, combine the denominators, OK? What's the LCD between this and this? Minus x? No, the LCD is actually uh, the first denominator times the second denominator. Okay, there's no like terms between them. Like they're completely different things. Like x and like something like x and x minus 2, they're not like terms when it comes to LCDs. You could add them up, but in terms of LCDs, um, you got to multiply them. So what you do is you're going to multiply both of them. So that, that means. Um, here, bear with me. The first guy is lacking 4 minus x, so multiply that. The second guy is lacking uh, 4 minus x minus h, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's going to look like this. On the bottom, you have 4 minus x minus h times 4 minus x. That's the LCD. And if you have three levels here in this form, 
this H is going to go to the second level. So that H is going to come here. And then you have X plus H times 4 minus X for the first one minus X times 4 minus X minus H like that. It's a lot of algebra here. But after this, after we open the brackets, things are going to cancel out nicely, hopefully, actually. So let's try that. Let's open the brackets and clean everything else. What is x plus h times 4 minus x? How to go about foiling this? There's two terms in both the brackets there, so that means you're going to end up with four terms total. Right, do it like this. We're going to go x with 4 first, and then we're going to go x with minus x. What's x times 4? Well, that's 4x. That's easy. What's x times x? x squared. Yeah, so your second term is going to be minus x squared. And then you want to go this way. h times 4 is 4h, and h times x is hx, or xh. Doesn't matter. Okay, like that. Mm -hmm. What about the second bracket? Let's You try opening this. What do you get? That one's easier. 4x minus x squared minus h times x. Yeah. Because there's a minus sign here, all those signs are going to flip, and it's going to look like this. All over h times 4 minus x minus h times 4 minus x, like this. OK? Mm -hmm. So now let's see. Things are going to cancel out. 4x minus 4x gone. Minus x squared plus x squared gone. hx, hx gone, yeah? Uh -huh. So I can eliminate all of those. Now, can I cancel out the h with the 4 with the h at the bottom? No. Yes, you can. This h and this h, finally, now you can. Because you're uh, there's no plus minus on the numerator. That's the only time you couldn't. OK? So now this okay. H and this H, you can finally cancel them out. OK, that's that's the main goal. And from here, if there's any other H's, they're going to become 0. OK, any other H, they're going to become 0. There's only one H here. So you can just ignore that. And there you go. That's going to be the final answer. We could have done that using quotient rule as well. But this question, it says, don't use the quotient rule. That's why we couldn't. Let's double check our answers, though. So quotient rule says this, f prime g minus f g prime all over g squared. What's f prime if f is x? What's the derivative of x? 1. 1, yeah. So g is just the denominator minus x minus f as it is x. What's the derivative of the denominator there? the derivative of f um, 4 minus x is the question. It's 4? It is not 4. 4 minus x, uh, the derivative, 4 drops. OK, 4x would be 4. But 4 minus x, any number is a 0. And the derivative of minus x is minus 1, because the derivative of x is 1. Or you can look at it like minus 1x, drop the uh, x. So you get minus x like that all over g squared, so all over 4 minus x squared. Now, if you look at this, you get 4 minus x, and this is going to become plus x. So this cancels out with this, and then you get what we got with the long form here. Cool? Mm -hmm. Quotient rule is definitely easier, but um, yeah, sometimes they will tell you that you can't use it. That's why we went the, we went around town for that one. But only that question asked us to use the definition. Everything else, it doesn't ask us to use that, right? Let's try this. So again, this is a, there's two ways to do this. Either you can move the denominator up, use the product rule, or you keep it like it is and use the quotient rule. Which one would you like to do? Let's move this up. So you get 3 times 3 minus x squared times negative 2, OK? Mm -hmm. 
just focus on this. The three is going to stay there. The three is not going to move. What's the derivative of that bracket, the entire bracket? You bring the negative two in the front? Yeah, negative two in the front. The inside bit stays as it is. What's so the, the new part path? of negative three? Yeah, and then what do we multiply this by? Negative 2x. Yeah, perfect, negative 2x. Now look at this. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 times negative 2x is what? 12x. 12. Yep, and this guy, you can toss it back in the denominator to make it look nice and pretty. There you go. That's going to be the final answer for this one. Question eight is very similar to what we just did. Okay, what does slope mean? Well, slope is just simply the derivative. Okay, slope is the instantaneous rate of change. It is just the derivative. Look at the first one there. Negative x cubed plus six x squared. If that's y, right, what's gonna be y prime? Find the derivative, yeah? What's the derivative of negative uh, x cubed? Does the three become a negative when you bring it in the front? Um, so this negative sign is gonna stay there and the three is gonna come down as it is like this. So you get negative three x squared for the first one. What about the second term? What's the derivative of six x squared? 12x. 12x. Okay, that's it. Right? So mm -hmm. we have negative 3x squared plus 12x. And it's asking us when is the slope negative 12? We'll set it equal to negative 12, like this. Uh, and then you need to bring everything to the same side because, uh, again, it's a polynomial. So I'm going to move, I'm going to make my 3 positive. So it's going to look like 3x squared minus 12x minus 12 is zero. Now, is there something that we can pull out right now? Do all three terms have something in common? No. Yes, it does. It has a three, right? If you pull out a three, you get something like this. Yeah? Uh-huh. And then you divide both sides by a three, zero over three is a zero, so that three just disappears. And now look at this, we're left with a quadratic trinomial. Got to man this. Two numbers that multiply to what and add it to what? They multiply to four, add up to negative four. Mm, they would multiply to negative four. They would also add up to negative four. Do they exist? No, they don't, do they? Because um, any variation of twos would make this a positive four when you multiply them. So they don't exist, I don't think so. Four and one also doesn't work. What do you do when they don't exist? In fact, if you look at this equation, this just this guy, do you think this one has a solution? Is it opening up or down? Up, up right? Where's the y-intercept? It's at negative four, yeah? So you look at the y-intercept, it's at negative four. It's going to open up. 
So does it have a solution? Solution just means x-intercept. Does it touch, does it pass through the x-intercept? Yes, it does, yeah? Mm -hmm. So this means it definitely has a solution. It's, a, it's not in factored form. You, you, you may not be able to write it in factored form, but it definitely has a um, x-intercepts. So, well, how do you go about finding that? You've got to use the quadratic formula. That's the only way to get it if man doesn't work. And man is not always going to work, like, like in this case. So quadratic formula says this. If you have anything in this form, the x-intercepts is given by something that looks like this. It's, it's, a, it's a handful. Mm. Here, compare this guy, x squared minus 4x minus 4, with um, ax squared plus bx plus c. What is a, what is b, and what is c? If you compare these two, right? You're going to get three letters out of it. C is minus, one. yeah, A is 1. B is minus 4, and C is also minus 4. Yeah, like that? Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to plug it in. So minus B, minus minus 4 becomes a plus 4. B squared, negative 4 squared is a 16. Minus 4 times A is 1. C is minus 4, all over 2 times 1, like that. That's all there is. 4 plus uh, 16 plus 16 is 32 over 2. There you go. That's the answer. You can plug it into the formula to get two different numbers for that one. Okay? Okay. So if man doesn't work, you have to use this quadratic formula. And if there's an x-intercept, quadratic formula always works. Man does not always work. Man only works for um, like nice multiples, I guess. This one, it's asking you to find the equation of the tangent line, yeah? Um, the equation of a tangent line is just a straight line. It's going to be in this form. y equals mx plus b, where m is the derivative. To find b, you just need to plug in any point x and y in there to find b, OK? This one's actually pretty simple. It's not that bad. Um, if this is y, what will be y prime for this? You bring 4 in the front. Yeah. And then you have x squared plus 5x plus 2. What do we multiply a cube? Cubed? What do you multiply this by? 2x plus 5. 2x plus 5 works. There you go. So that's your y prime, OK? To find the slope value, you just want to plug in the x value as whatever they've given you of the point. So for this one, you're going to plug all the x values as 0. So this will be 0, this will be 0, and this will be 0. So the answer is 4 times 2 cubed, uh, which is 8, times 5. 40 times 4 is 160. There you go. That's your m value. Okay. So, so far, you have y equals to 160x plus b. How do we find b? Notice they've given you a point. You just plug it in. Yeah, you just plug x as 0. So this becomes 0, and y is 16, so b is 16. Therefore, the final answer, the equation of a tangent line is 160x plus 16. And you are done. OK? Uh -huh. You want to try finding y prime for b? If this is y, what's y prime? You bring a 5 to the front. Yeah. And everything in the bracket to the power of 4. Right. And then what do you multiply that by? What do you do when you have like two exponents? You do them one at a time. So the first one would be um, three times negative, bring the negative two down, 
Uh, so it'll be negative six x negative three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The next one, again, bring the three down. You have minus two times three, six. And this one will have two, like that. OK. And then we need to find the m value, right? Uh, to find the m value, just plug in the x value, whatever they've given you. Last time it was a 0. Now it's a 1. Now, if you remember, 1 to the power of anything is a 1. So you can just ignore these guys. The x's, you can just ignore them. Because 1 to the power of anything is a 1. Doesn't matter positive exponent, negative exponent. So you have something like this. So you have 3 minus 2 is a 1. 1 to the power of 4 is still a 1. So from this entire thing, you get a 5. And then from the other thing, negative 6 minus 6 is negative 12. So we're doing 5 times negative 12, it's negative 60. Therefore, you have y equals, that's our slope, this is our m value, negative 60x plus b. How do we find b? You just plug in 1 and 1. Yeah, that's 1 and 1, me. that's it. So plus b, so what will b be? It's just 60. Uh, no. Oh. 61. Right? Okay. You agree with that? 61? Mm hmm And that's it. That is it. It is not that difficult, I guess. Let's try doing this one. Memorizing words. How are you with memory? You probably need to memorize a bunch of things for science, I guess. Uh -huh. Is this legit though, this one? um. I mean, I don't know how you're supposed to measure the words you can memorize. There are experiments on this, though. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure there is. And they're being done all the time. Like, um, I've seen this be done, like, with breakfast, without breakfast, stuff like that, with number of hours of sleep. Yeah, let's, let's try this. Well, I mean, we don't care about that, but... Um, Okay, so you're given some function m. You can call it m of t or whatever. That's 0 0.1 t squared minus 0 0.001 t cubed, where t is minutes and m is the number of words that you can memorize. Part A is asking you for what? First 10 minutes? So tell me, for part A, is it asking you m of 10 or is it asking you m prime of 10? Again, prime means the derivative, which means the rate of change or the slope or something. It's asking for m of 10. Just m of 10, no m prime. Because, um, yeah, just asking the number of words after 10 minutes. So all you do is you're going to plug t as 10, right? That's all you do for this one. 0 0.001. Let's see how smart this kid is. 0 0.001 times 10 cubed. So 0 0.1 times 10 squared minus 0 0.001 times 10 cubed. That gives me 9. That is not that <laughs> impressive, is it? 10 minutes, you 9 words. Um, what about 5th? Exactly, are you memorizing like completely new words? Or like I think so. I think no. this this one um, is like, I don't know if you know, the SATs in the US, you, you've heard about that? Mm-hmm. So it's like a test, um, it's like a college test, that one. You need to do SATs and then you're gonna get a certain grade. And um, yeah, depending on how you score, that's gonna dictate whether you get into certain schools or not. Um, that one has a, uh, I've written it a couple of times. Um, that one has three components. There's like a reading component, there's like a writing component, and there's like a math component. The math component is not that difficult because it's American maths, right? Mm -hmm. Like this one is pretty simple. Writing, they're going to ask you to write an essay or something. The reading component is where this, I think, where this is coming from. Like, they're going to give you words, right? Mm -hmm. And then they're going to ask you to, like, kind of describe what that word means. It's going to be multiple choice, most of them anyways. They're going to give you a certain word that you've probably never seen. They're going to ask you which one of these is the definition of this word. 
So I think this is where this comes into play. Um, to do well in the, this, like it's like a um, spelling bee, you know that? Mm -hmm. Even that one, you kind of have to know the definition or they, they tell you the definition of the words for the spelling. So I think it's kind of like that for this one. So if it's completely like nine new words, I mean, I don't know how old this kid is, then yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense. But I think nine is a little bit too low. What about 15? Let's see. So for 15, you just want to plug T as 15. So this becomes a five, this becomes a five. 0 0.1 times 15 squared minus 0 0.001 times 15 cubed. Um, so this is a counterproductive actually, 6.625. See, actually, wait, what? How does that make sense? 0 0.1 times 15 squared minus 0 0.001 times 15 cubed. Okay, yeah, no, that was my bad. This is actually 19. So there we go, 19 words in 15 minutes. Cool? Mm -hmm. For part B, though, again, look at part B. They want the rate. What does rate mean? Do they want m of 10 or m prime of 10? Prime of 10. Right. So if m is this, what's m prime? It's 2t. Uh, 0 0.2t for the first term minus, OK, bring the 3 down. It's going to be 3 times 0 0.001, so 0 0.003t squared, like that. Okay. Okay, this is m prime, and now we can find m prime of t, or 10, I guess. Let's see which one is better. So for 10, you just plug that as 10 times 10 minus 0 0.003 times 10 squared. For the first one, this gives me 1.7. Again, the unit here is going to be words per minute. That's the rate. Let's try 15. So again, replace these two t's with 15. So 0 0.2 times 15 minus 0 0.003 times 15 squared. So that gives 2.325 words per minute. So he's memorizing more words at 15 minutes than at 10 minutes. That's all that means. OK? Uh -huh. Was that impressive, two words a minute? I mean, I guess so. Yeah, I guess, like, especially if you have to memorize the definition of it, right, of a word that you've never seen, yeah, then I guess that's not too bad. Um, all right, anyways, let's call it a day there. All right, thank you. See ya.